Dagster Plus is used by hundreds of enterprises to design and run reliable data pipelines. It builds on top of Dagster's orchestration platform to enhance the collaboration and productivity of your data team. By making the most of the asset-oriented approach, Dagster Plus provides additional functionality above and beyond what you will find in Dagster open source. Here are a few quick highlights. For example, because Dagster already handles all the metadata and lineage of your data assets, it makes sense for it to provide built-in data catalog capabilities, which is a powerful addition for both your pipeline maintainers and other data teams and stakeholders in your organization. Dagster supports flexible checks on data assets for data quality and freshness purposes. Some examples of these data quality checks include watching for schema changes, unique values, matching keys, and so on and so forth. These can be written in code or loaded directly from an integration, such as our integration with DVT. And based on the result of a check, you define whether the pipeline should stop or just emit a warning. A main responsibility of running a data platform is tracking performance and cost metrics for the system as a whole. The insights capability built into Dagster Plus lets you do this seamlessly, tracking key metadata and cloud spend over time and alerting the right people if things drift out of your expected ranges. When you first get set up, you have the choice to use Dagster Plus as a fully serverless solution, or you could choose the hybrid deployment model. The serverless option lets you productionize pipelines without having to set up any infrastructure and is fully hosted by us. The hybrid model ensures your code runs entirely in your infrastructure. Dagster Plus manages the operational burden, but your business logic is protected as it never sees your code and your data residency is maintained as it'll also never see your data. We'd like to get up and running as soon as possible, so we'll choose serverless. Next, we'll connect our GitHub account. If we had an existing Dagster project, we could quickly upload it. But instead, we'll use a template with some example code to generate a new GitHub repository for us with CI CD already configured and a sample pipeline to get started. And within minutes, we'll have that project deployed to our new Dagster Plus production environment. Once the deployment is complete, we can view our pipeline in the Dagster Plus UI. From here, we can materialize our assets, which means starting a run to build our data sets. With our code successfully running, let's go ahead and make a change. Let's open up the source code in our IDE, in this case, VS Code. Here, we have a few software-defined assets, which are your core building block when working with Dagster. The first asset pulls a list of IDs of the currently trending top stories on Hacker News. The second gets the titles from each of these IDs. Let's add another asset, which reads into top stories and collects the URLs from each of them. Now that we've made our change, we can commit it back to our main branch, and this will kick off another deployment to our production instance. After a few moments, our new asset is live in our production environment and ready to be materialized. Dagster Plus is built to scale with the size of your data team and your data pipelines. Let's take a look at what the development process on a more mature data platform looks like. Here, we have a slightly more complex data pipeline represented as an asset graph. This pipeline ingests data from some external source, loads it into a database, and then transforms the data. From this data, we build some DVT models, and our machine learning team also generates some forecasts. These pipelines are all treated and built using assets. By deploying our code to Daxter Plus, we can ensure our assets are reliably up to date. 
But Dagster Plus isn't just a platform to run your code. It's built to supercharge the developer experience and enable your team to build, test, and deploy their data pipelines with confidence. A change begins in the local developer environment where developers write their code. Let's go ahead and expand on our existing data pipelines by adding a new asset and having our downstream continent population asset depend on it. We will then create a new branch, commit the changes that we just made to that branch, and then push it up to our GitHub repository. Next, we'll create a pull request. The Dagster Plus integrations with Git providers will automatically create a branch deployment, which are an ephemeral staging environment where we can run our work against real cloud services and test our changes. After a few moments, our branch deployment is ready for us to test our changes in. Branch deployments run against a forked environment that we can test against to gain confidence in our work. And with change tracking, it's easy for me to understand what's new or different and how it impacts my data pipelines. Change tracking makes it easy to see exactly what assets have changed in your branch and launch materializations of just those assets. When a branch deployment is created, it is compared to the main production deployment and assets that have been changed in the branch are marked in the UI. You can filter down to just these assets so that you can quickly see what has changed and launch materializations to those assets and the downstream assets that depend on them. Once I'm ready to merge my change, deploying to production is as easy as simply merging that pull request. I hope this short introduction helped you get a feel for Daxter and how it differs from other approaches to orchestration. If you want to dig in deeper, feel free to explore the Daxter documentation, the Daxter University courses, and sign up for your free trial of Daxter Plus. Take care.